You want to lose weight. When you go online and start looking for the ways how you can lose that weight, you find suggestions of avoid any fat, carbs, go vegan, prevent any calorie that enters your body. But when you apply, you find out for sometimes it works. But later on, you slip back to the same situation you were before. In fact, in some situations, you end up even bigger than you were before. It's a big mystery for everyone, despite following the diet programs, why they fail, why they end up much bigger than they were before. And the reason is that they don't understand how their metabolism works. In today's summary, I'm going to clarify why we eat too much, what are the myths behind diet programs, and how we can really lose the weight. Main idea number one from the book, what is energy and why we need it? Energy is the capacity that allows objects and living beings to perform a task. It is required by everyone and everything in the universe, living and non-living beings. For example, vehicles need and use energy to transport humans and goods from one point to another point. The smartphones use energy to perform the services that we instruct them to do. Living beings need energy to grow and think if that living being is able to think like humans. These energies are extracted from external sources. For example, vehicles get their energy from fuel. Smartphones and other technologies get their energy from electricity. Humans get their energy from food, water and sunlight. But not 100% of these energies are used by living and non-living beings to perform their tasks. Some of the energy is vested as gas and heat, etc. When we take away these energies from these objects and living beings, they are unable to perform any tasks. When it comes to us as human beings, we get the biggest part of our energies from foods and drinks that we consume on daily basis. That's enough for biology class. Now let's move to physics class. Main idea number two, self-correcting systems. Our body is designed with numerous complex systems. Like any other systems, we also have auto-correcting features in our systems. For example, in project management, projects run on systems. When there is a team member makes a mistake, such as failing to complete a task before the deadline, the project manager is responsible to take certain actions to make sure that these mistakes does not happen again in the future and realign the project back to its goal. This is called negative feedback. Similarly, our body has auto-run negative feedback. Our negative feedback does not run by a project manager. It runs based on two factors, a sensor and a switch. Let's take example of our hydration. When our hydration level drops below 70%, we feel thirsty, which results in weakness, dizziness, and eventually to death. Then in dehydration situation, our autocorrect sensor comes to rescue us. And in this case, our sensor is our kidney. Based on how much water we have in our body, our kidney sends message to two switches. One switch controls our thirst, which makes us feel thirsty. So we intake more water to refill the water level. And the second switch controls the water out through our urine. Our kidney as sensor turns on the first switch to allow us to take more water and turns off the second switch to save as much water as it can. That is why during dehydration, our urine is darker because there is no waste of water. Similarly, in the situation of overhydration, our kidney turns off the first switch to stop any water to come into our body and turns on the second switch to allow excess water to get out of our body. This thirst system is not the only system in our body. We have numerous other systems as well in our body that runs on self-correction. And our energy consumption and management is one of those systems. Now let us understand our metabolism system in the main idea number three. In the same way our kidney manages our water level, our body manages our weight. For losing weight, our body is the sensor and the two switches are appetite for more food and metabolism rate. 
Metabolism rate is the rate at which our body converts food and drink into energy. When we eat more food, our body turns off the appetite switch, which means we have less appetite to eat more food. At the same time, our body increases our metabolism rate, which means we consume more of the stored energy. In the opposite situation, when our body lacks energy or we are hungry, our body turns on the appetite switch, which means we have more appetite to eat more food and it decreases the metabolism rate to store and save as much energy as it can. There are two research that back up this finding. In 1976, an American scientist, Ethan Sims, conducted an experiment with volunteer inmates from a state prison. He was curious to know if people deliberately overate for three months, would it increase their weight by 25%? To find that out, Sims increased the daily intake calories of the inmates from 2,200 to 4,000. The inmates quickly showed weight gain. But after a certain point, there's something strange happened. The inmates stopped gaining more weight. Even Sims was increasing the daily intake calories of the inmates up to 10,000. But there were still some inmates. They didn't show any extra weight gain. When Sims examined the participants more closely, he found that the participants' metabolism rate increased dramatically. It means that their bodies were consuming energy at a higher rate than average rate. Sims thought there might be some exceptions. But later on in 2006, another research found the same result. In that research, 21 overeating participants were examined. And that showed that overeating increases the metabolism rate by 10%. These two research can show us that overeating is not the main reason behind that thick layer of fat on our bellies. Because when we eat more, our body, just like our kidney, adjusts our metabolic rate to burn more calories and keep us in a good shape. But that is not the only reason why many diet programs fail. There is another astonishing finding. Let's find that out in main idea number four. Drama after calorie restrictions. Many weight loss programs are based on an understanding that when your energy consumption is greater than your energy intake, you are good to go. But a study proves this wrong. In 1944, a study was undertaken to understand what happens to our metabolism rate when we are in the situation of calorie starvation. The scientists restricted daily calorie intake of the volunteers to 3,200 per day for three months. This level of calorie is normal for anyone who performs any manual labor. After three months, the scientists reduced their calorie intake to 1,500. The scientists named this level of calorie intake as semi-starvation. The scientists kept the daily calorie intake of the participants to 1,500 for the second three months. He noticed that the metabolism rate of the participants dropped dramatically. He was expecting a drop of only 25%, but they showed a drop up to 50%. When he examined the participants, he noticed that the participants' heartbeats were slowing down. They were breathing more slowly. Their body temperature fell down. Simply, their bodies were shutting down. But when participants returned to normal diet, they showed an alarming rate of weight gaining, even more than the weight that they had before. It was due to metabolism depression during calorie starvation. The scientists also found that, that the muscle that the participant lost during calorie starvation were being filled by fat now. When our calorie intake is reduced, just like our kidney, our body shuts down all the waste of energy and tries to save as much energy as it can. Our body doesn't understand if we are voluntarily restricting our daily calorie intake or we are going through famine. It acts on safety first approach to increase the chances of our survival. In fact, when we get back to normal calorie intake, our metabolic rate that dropped due to calorie starvation it still performs on a very low rate. Since our body is still recovering from calorie depression, our body keeps our metabolic rate as low as it can to fill in the fat cells and store as much energy as it can to protect us in the next family. That's because our body is still thinking that we restricted our calorie not because of our volunteer choices, but because of famine. This is why many short-term diet programs that specifically run on calorie restriction do more harm to us than good in the long run. 
all these information suggest us that we don't need any diet program because our body is defaultly designed to keep us in a good shape. But, 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 but why we keep gaining more weight? Why obesity is becoming a health pandemic all over the world, especially in Western countries? Next part is going to answer that question. Main idea number five, our food is the real enemy. The biggest reason behind our obesity is the food that we eat. If we compare ourselves with our ancestors, we consume less natural fat and more sugar and industrially produced vegetable oils. When we consume industrially produced oils, it numbs the process of receiving the message to switch on and off the metabolism and the appetite switches, which help us to keep in good shape. Similarly, whatever processed food and drink we eat and drink nowadays, it has a significant amount of sugar. When we consume sugar, it spikes the sugar level in our blood and it produces too much insulin, which causes our cells to suck the sugar from our blood. What happens next? Our sugar level drops in our blood and we crave for more sugar. Where can we find more sugar? In the foods and drinks. This way, we get stuck in a never-ending cycle of eating and drinking and big companies and industries invest millions of dollars on research to find out how they can add more sugar so they can keep us addicted to foods and drinks. From this book, it is obvious that our body is naturally designed to keep us in good and healthy shape. But industries and companies are investing and earning profits of billions of dollars to poison our food and kill many people around the globe. To keep us healthy and win this war against these big industries, there is only one way. Avoid as much processed food, drink, oil and sugar as much as you can. Otherwise, the time is not far away when you look yourself in the mirror in your regret and stress how to lose that weight that's not only making you look fat but also causing many other health problems. Lack of good quality sleep is another reason why everyone is getting and moving towards obesity. Bring a good balance in your sleep by watching the summary of sleep solution here. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Much love and bye.